Well, good morning, guys. Hope you're all doing well. And welcome back to Northumberland today and a location that we visited last year. And the reason I wanted to come back up here is last year I kind of struggled a bit. The heather wasn't at its best. And even though the heather is seen better days in a lot of places, actually over here it's really nice and vivid. So I wanted to come back to this location and try and get some new shots and maybe some panoramas actually out in the distance out there with these pine trees and then you've got the Cheviot Hills off in the distance over that way so I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try a pano here first now I'm literally just on the side of the road here for this first shot but I really like the way those trees are off to the left of those Cheviot mountains out there so I'm going to do a panorama from the start of the heather and the start of the hills over to beyond the trees and round this sort of direction round there and obviously, even though that I'm using this Fuji camera and I love that letterbox format, it's a lot wider than I can actually get in with that sort of uh, crop in camera. So I'm gonna do a, an actual panorama. So I'm gonna level my head here. That's the thing I've got with this Rogetti head as well, is I've got the ability to make all these adjustments and I can get it leveled from the bottom part of the head. And then the top section, I can literally just rotate once I've got it in line. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get set up, get my monitor and everything on the back of the camera so I can walk you through how I'm gonna line the shot up and how I'm gonna do it. Right, you should be able to see the back of the screen now. And what you've seen is I'm right in at uh, 70 mil on, there, on this. So I'm getting the edge of the hills off to the right there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a pano from the edge of the hills all the way around the, the hill range themselves right the way past where these trees are off in the distance here. I want that whole frame in. And as I said before, even though I've got this lovely crop in camera, there's no way I would get all of this in. So doing a pano is pretty much the only way. Now again, same method as before, I've leveled my camera all I'm going to do is release this little latch on the top and spin from the top section of my tripod all the way around. So, before I start, same as before, take a picture of my hand. And that signifies the start of the pano. Then, I'm in that lower third. Now, obviously because I'm quite close to this heather in the foreground here, I'm going to have, a, have to accept there's movement. But it'd be quite interesting to see how the, uh, the software picks up this when it stitches the panorama together. Is this movement going to cause any issues? So I'm actually not going to freeze it. I'm going to leave that motion in there because I've found in the past, if I'm doing it with uh, Lightroom and Photoshop, that any sort of movement in the lower sort of section of the frame tends to cause little bits of um, problems in the stitch. So I'm interested to see what happens with this. So I'm going to take a shot first, first shot in the bag, on that lower part of the third again. I'm still at ISO 100 at a 60th of a second at F16. So that's the first shot. Now again, just release the camera and make sure that I re leave enough room to overlap. So I know those mountains in the middle of the frame there. So I can move those off into the next portion of my frame. Make sure everything's still level and it is. And then I'm going to refocus, take my next frame. And then same again, I've got those hills off to the left so I now know where the position is on my camera. I can move that across into the next part of my frame. And then grab the next shot. And then just keep repeating this process all the way around till I'm finished where I want the pano to end. So now I can move that there into there. And I've got this lovely sort of leading line of this track going off through the frame now as well. That's got that next section. And I can put that off to the right hand side of my frame, take another shot. Now this is going to be a quite a few images to stitch together, so this will make it more interesting again. So now that I've got that there, I can move that hill into that right. 
and the light's quite nice as well now off over over where the trees are so it's going to be really interesting to see how this stitch is it's not often that I actually do panoramas like this because I've got used to using them in camera but it just goes to show that you can get so much more in doing it this way I'm just going to adjust my exposure slightly and now I've been keeping it about a stop under just to retain the detail in that sky again do another shot and then I want to take it past the trees so I'm going to go to around about there, keep an eye on my levels, take another shot. And that should be pretty much all of those images put together then and I can try them out when we get back home. So moving on, we're just going to go into Luminar now. We've just opened it up and you can see down this right hand side here we have all these different things like HDR merge, focus stacking, upscale and then down the bottom here I've got panoramic stitching. So what we're going to do is add photos. So we'll go up to the add photos dialog here. Click on add photos and then I'm going to go to my desktop and then go to my raw images of panos and then add those in and we'll just click OK there so now it's going to bring up all those images that I took on the day so we're going to ignore, ignore the first part and then you can see where my hand came in to signify the start of the shots there so we're going to take this first image from here so I'm going to click on the first one and then select all the rest that I want in that sequence so we've got them all selected there you can see they're all highlighted so now what I need to do is drag them into the panorama stitching dialog there so click and hold and drag all of those images into that dialog and click on start Now it's going to load all these images up and prepare these images so we're just going to hang tight now and see how long it takes to collate them all and then it'll stitch them all together there. And there we go, we can see that it's actually stitched them all together there and it's done a pretty good job. Now these down the bottom here look as though they're all your different styles so you've got um, spherical, cylindrical, um, Mercator, uh, plane and fisheye um, and I'm actually just going to scroll through these and see what they look like You can see that it gives you a different look on each one. But I'm leaning towards the original, which was the spherical, I think. So what I'm going to do is click continue. Now that it brings the uh, crop icon up so you can make any adjustments with the crop now I did say out on field there the good thing to do with any of these panoramas is make sure that you overshoot each edge so you basically shoot more than you want so you've got room to be able to crop in so as you can see there's quite a lot of negative space over on this left side so I'm just going to bring this in on the left side there I think the right sides okay but I'm gonna bring that left side in just that little bit and then click crop and there we go we have that final image now that's a final image that I can now go and develop um, it looks to me as if it's done a really good job but we'll save it now and then we'll have a a closer look before I do any work to it so that we can see how well it's stitched this uh, this image together
So let's have a look at this image now that it's all stitched together. And it's looking pretty good as far as I can see. It's done a really good job of stitching this together. There's no obvious artifacts anywhere. Now, I did say there would be some movement down in the heather below because I wasn't compensating for that because I wanted it to uh, actually allow a bit of movement down in the lower section of the frame so I could see how well this stitched together. And as you can see, it's done a fantastic job of stitching all of these images together. So that now means that I can take this back in and produce this image how I want and uh, get a final image I'm really happy with. Actually, while standing in the same location, I've actually spotted another shot, which is basically the valley is kind of a nice U-shape down here, and you've got all this lovely arable land down in the lower half of the valley. You've got this hill off to the right, and then you've got the Cheviot Hills off to the left over there. So I'm going to try and take a pano starting from the top of this hill all the way around, sweeping around with this beautiful heather in the foreground as well. So you should be able to see it now. So I'm going to line this first shot up with the top of the hill. And you've got that wall coming down. I'm going to keep it about a stop under again, just because of how bright that sky is, especially when you've got those blue bits and these really bright clouds there as well. So again, take a picture of my hand to signify the first shot. That's it. And then grab the first shot. And there's some beautiful light hitting this hill now as well. So that's the first one in. And it's a relatively simple process once you uh, start down this road, is just knowing where you can overlap and just make sure you, you leave enough room to overlap the image. Because that's the real downfall with uh, stitching panoramas is if you don't leave enough room to stitch those images, that's when you run into real big problems. So, got that one in. So, you've just got to look for a reference point inside the image to know how much room you have to overlap. And then, keep an eye on your levels and also keep an eye on your histogram as well to make sure nothing has changed in the frame. And you just follow the same process each time. Once you've done this one or two times, it's easy enough just to uh, refine the process. You know how it all works by then. And if in doubt, just take extra images. I mean, it costs you nothing these days to, to take extra images, so if you're at all in doubt, make sure you take a little bit extra from one side of the image and a little bit extra on the end of the image, and then you've got room to adjust your crop if you haven't got it quite right. And that one's there. Make sure everything's level again. Move your crop across. And rinse and repeat. And then we're gonna get this uh, next image back as well. I can't do anything. I can't really see what they're gonna look like. That's the only downside to a panorama. You have to visualize what they're going to look like. You can't actually see what the final result's gonna look like. So you've just got to uh, pre-visualize what it's gonna look like in the end result. So. Uh, just wait until you get back to see the final result. Right, so again, we're just gonna do the same process. 
click on my first image right after my hand there and then select all the images that I want in those then we're going to go down to the panorama stitching module again click on them and drag them all into that module again and then click on start now obviously each one of these images I do it's going to be exactly the same process so I'm just going to run through it really quickly this time and then we'll get to the uh, the final result and there we go it's brought this image up again and it seems to have done a great job again here now I'm going to stick with the uh, the first one like I did before um, I really like the way that looks so click continue and then that's going to give me the crop option again now as far as this crop goes I can just see the edge of this track down here and I really want to get rid of that so I'm going to bring in the left hand side of the crop because I did overshoot this crop this um, panorama anyway same way as I did with the first one to allow me enough room to uh, bring that in and I'm just going to bring that in so that you don't see the edge of that track anymore and I'm just going to crop that right like that and there we go look at the job that's done it's done a fantastic job again I honestly can't see anything that looks like artifacts where the stitching's messed up or anything like that. It's done a great job. So I'm going to save that again. And there we go. The image is complete. So we can have a quick look now and see what it's like. And again, it seems to have done a fantastic job. In stitching this together I'm not seeing anything that looks like it's uh, it's made any mistakes anywhere it just looks like a really good job of a panorama stitch and again it's given me a great base to start from and uh, I can edit this how I see fit now but this obviously it's a big panel this it's a huge landscape that I took in and it's uh, yeah I think it's it's looking great as a raw file as it is so we're gonna process this and I'll pop that image up next for you Now from where we were, which is way up on the hills behind you there, notice this tower standing out in the landscape and I thought it'd be quite an interesting shot. Again, I'd probably take this using my strip panel and the GFX, but what I'm gonna try, try here, I'm gonna take both um, so you can see actually how much more you can get in using an actual panel rather than the strip panel. But to be honest, this is probably how I would take it. I would be tempted just to use the in-camera crop because it's a nice shot it is with the cheviots and everything behind us there I think it will work well but I'm also going to take a wider shot so of incorporating more of the landscaping behind it to kind of see so can kind of the viewer can see how this structure kind of blends into the landscape and how it kind of uh, interacts with the landscape 
So I'll just show you the back of the camera again. So what you should be seeing now is that I've got it in uh, portrait orientation again. And I'm just going to start my image off to the right hand side of the tower itself, so over here. I'm going to take a photograph of my hand again, signifying the start of the first image. Now I'm underexposing by a stop again on this first one because of the uh, brightness in the sky. And I'm just going to grab this first image. Focusing a third of the way in and I'm not going to move that focus point, I'll leave it exactly where it is and I'm only going to adjust where my camera position is. So I'm to the right of the tower now and I'll move that tower into the middle of the frame now. So that overlaps halfway on both sides. And then I'll take that image again. So that's the second shot. And then I'm going to take the third shot. Just by moving it into that next section. Keeping an eye on my level as well. And grab that shot as well. So I've got three images there that I'm going to stitch together to give a wider perspective and I'm going to pop the original um, strip panel version off that I usually use in this camera and then I'll put the, uh, the full image up with the uh, stitched panorama as well and you can see the difference. Same process again so select the first image hold down command and select the other images there's only around four of these ones, as far as I remember, as it's not as large a scene as the last one. And then we're just going to drag them into panorama stitching again. There we go. In they go. And hit start. Now, while this is working, I just want to point out that you can just see underneath here, the way that it actually sorts these images out is really handy as well because when you bring that folder in you've got that folder of raw images you've brought in and then when you've actually stitched those panoramas it puts them in a separate folder underneath there so your stitched and finished panoramas actually go into this next folder underneath which is really helpful i find so there we go, there's the final image and you can see it's done a great job again. Now obviously it's quite dark because I was preserving the detail in the sky up here. But as a panorama it's looking nice. So we're just going to click continue again. And then it's going to give me the crop mode again to be able to crop in. Now on this token what I'm going to actually do is leave it alone because, because the image wasn't quite as wide as the other images. I feel as though I don't really have to touch it too much. There might be a little bit of foreground that I might need to take out. But other than that, I think it looks pretty pretty good, to be honest. In fact, what I'm going to do, now that I've actually mentioned it, I'm just going to, to bring a little bit of that uh, foreground out. Because I feel as though there's maybe a little bit too much down the bottom side of the image. There we go. Just leave it like that and then crop it. And there we go, I think I'm happy enough with that.
Right guys, so we've just made our way back up the road now, heading back towards home after going right across into the northeast there. And on the way back, we've passed this tree a million times and I've actually shot this tree before a long, long time ago. But seeing as uh, we haven't done it for such a long time, I thought it'd be a great place to turn up and try another panorama because it's not something that I've tried. I've always, the last time I was here, I think I was using a crop sensor camera, it was that long ago and I had to crop right in to get a, a certain crop and it didn't look the best quality. So I thought while we're passing, decent night, we've got nice clouds above there, just hope those keep rolling through as sunset approaches and uh, work with what we have here. So what I'm gonna do is show you the back of the screen now. Is what you can see is I'm in portrait orientation again for my pano. Again, just taking a shot of my hand before I start. He says. There we go. And that just indicates the start of the panorama sequence. You can see, looking through there now, I'm over to the right and I've lined up this first mound over here, the edge of the mound where it kind of goes down in between, there's a cross section. I've lined up my uh, the right side of the image there. And I'm just gonna grab that first image. I'm on the lower third with my focus point again. Uh, ISO 100, 100th of a second at f16, and I'm shooting two stops under. And that's basically because the sky is quite bright and you can see there's quite a lot of bright sunshine at the minute and I don't want any clouds back there to blow out. So that's got the first image. I'm just gonna move across now, giving myself enough room to overlap. So I've just got the edge of the main tree there. Grab that image. And all I'm concentrating on is making sure I'm still level and the uh, histogram still in the middle and nothing's changed likewise. So I'm just gonna move myself along now and get the tree right in shot now. So this is the third image. Grab that. And then again, adjust myself and put the tree in the center of the frame now. Now, I'm not sure until I get back on a main monitor whether I'm gonna like all this foreground in the shot. I think it might be too much, so it might need cropped in a bit from the bottom. But however, the light's quite nice on it, so I'm just gonna overlap again. So this is probably gonna end up being about five shots, this panorama. Everything's still level and nothing's changed on the histogram really, significantly anyway. And then my last shot, I'm just going to move across to the left. Now I don't want to, to go too far because what's gonna happen is the sun's just over here and I don't want the sun in the shot and I don't want it to uh, clip those clouds that are off in the distance either because obviously the closer I get to the sun over this way, those clouds are gonna get brighter. So I'll take this last shot. So now we have those, I think there's five shots there. We'll get back to the studio and I'm gonna drop them in this software and see how it handles this image. So just gonna click and drag all of those into panorama stitching again. And then we're gonna click start. And what I really love about this program and the way it's been working is it's just so simple. You just grab hold of those images, pull them in, click the look that you're going for, how you want your image to actually appear. You've got the option to crop it, as you see in program, and then you're done. You can take that image on further then. You can actually either edit it further in within Luminar or take it outside to an external program and edit it outside but you've got all of those options in front of you then but it does such a great job of stitching all that together so that you've got that base file to work with right so here we have the file again now with this last image i also want to show you this feature as well before we actually go through to the cropping stage and it brings up this the panorama that you've actually done it allows you to adjust all of these little options down the bottom here like your spherical or your cylindrical it actually allows you to do 
all of this by doing it live. And why? what I mean by that is you can grab the image and you can tilt the image towards you or away from you and give a different look and feel to your image just by doing it actually inside the image there. And it allows you to do one of two things, is to give it a different look. And if you've got objects like the tree d down there and it's off to one side, it actually allows you to kind of straighten everything back up again. So you see, I could tilt that back up or I could tilt it down to give it a different perspective. And I can do all that live. And I think that's a fantastic feature to be able to do. So I prefer this one here because I think it looks as though it gives the image a nice depth down there. I really like the way it's stitched everything together again. There's absolutely nothing I can see which is out of line or it's put any sort of weird elements in there. It just looks like a really neat and tidy job. Well guys, hopefully you've seen the advantages of using this software and what a good job it does stitching these panoramas together. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video soon. Take care. Bye bye.